The next presentation would be made by my former PhD student, Manish Roy. Unfortunately, he cannot be here. So it's my pleasure to jump in for him and present what he has done on the tensile behavior of reinforced bar rebar reinforced ultra high performance concrete. And the focus on this research was what effect have the amount of fibers and the fiber orientation on the tensile behavior of rebar reinforced UHPC? And I will also hit then on the topic of a pullout. So this is the goal to investigate the influence of fiber volume fraction and fiber orientation, those two parameters, on the unit exit tensile behavior of rebar reinforced UHPC. I would like to introduce this following concept. And you might be very well aware of that you start with the left picture, you see a rebar all the way through, embedded in concrete, like a regular reinforced concrete, you pull this and at some point, um, the matrix cracks. Right? When the matrix cracks, the energy which is released or the force which is not there to transfer through the concrete has to be somewhere, right? if it's still stable. So in due to equilibrium, it goes through the bar. Right, so you have then some localization, and if you further increase the load, the bar yields where it has cracked, and at some point it fails. Right? Um, when we have fiber reinforced concrete, I see this here. Okay, if you have fiber reinforced concrete, then when the matrix cracks, then you have fibers that can still resist some of those cracks, and then at some point the fiber will be pulled out, and then soon the fiber have been pulled out, it will be the same behavior as a regular reinforced concrete. With UHPC, we are aware well, well that you can design it in a way to make it strain hardening. This means when the matrix cracks, it can still resist more load. So if you apply more load or more deformation, uh, then it can increase the load in between where it hasn't been cracked, and then it cracks there too, and then it cracks there too, and so on, until you have a multiple cracking um, where the steel uh, is activated in every of those cracks, and the fibers are activated at the same time. Then eventually, um, the matrix will then start to reach its post strength and then, or maximum strength, and then softens up. Then this is the place where one crack, one major crack opens. Right? This is where then the steer gets even further activated, and eventually it plastifies and fails. Now the question is, with a strain heart in new HPC, do we have more than one major crack? Okay. So, and then will this be ductile enough? Will this change a certain philosophy? So that could be that, yeah, the matrix fails here. What happens? The matrix softens. It cannot resist as much anymore, right? It goes down. But why it goes down? Maybe the bar here can can up can catch up with this, right? with yielding or hardening, so it can compensate this. If it can, then there will be another major crack open at some point. And then you have like multiple major crack openings and you have a similar ductile failure like a regular reinforced concrete. And then at some point with those major openings, the steel bar will reach its ultimate strength and then it fails there. So we wanted to investigate what effect has the volume of fiber reinforcement and the fiber orientation on in this behavior. And is there at some point a concern? A concern which might not be logical because you think you combine a ductile concrete, a strain hardening ductile material with a ductile steel and we are concerned about a non-ductile failure. Let's see whether uh, this can happen or not. Um, so what you see here is the stress versus strain behavior. Here of the UHPC matrix, what I was uh, sharing, that you have a hardening behavior and then after the peak or post-peak softening behavior. This is the steel. And the stress here is related to the steel diameter, where here the stress was related to uh, the concrete section. If we combine those two, then the reinforcement ratio comes into play. For example, here we have a 0.9% of rebar in the cross-section. Right? Um, the added force 
on top of the rebar through the concrete makes this behavior. Now, the force, you have to decide where you relate this from, and the force is related to the same bar diameter, um, just to make it comparable to the bar graph here. So, we have to deal with force equilibrium. If we open up a crack here, we have a force of the matrix, depending on the area of the matrix, and here we have a force in the bar, right? Whatever, how much the bar is strained. And then here it comes. We thought about what makes this now critical or not. If when the crack opens and we have a stress loss here, M for matrix, the stress loss in the matrix times the area, how much concrete you have used, uh, gives you a, a drop in the force. This needs to be compensated by the steel. The steel, if it increases its stress times the area of the rebar, has an increase in force. Now, there are like two comparisons you can make. If the loss in the matrix is smaller than the gain in the rebar, then we are fine, right? Then we have a formation of multiple micro cracks and we increase our ductility. But if the loss in the matrix force-wise is smaller than, or oh, sorry, larger, so loss is larger than what the bar can compensate, then we have a problem. Then only as soon as one macro cracks open, the bar cannot compensate this anymore, and it, it fails. It fails suddenly, and, uh, and then we lose ductility here. So um, how is ductility be defined? Uh, when you look through the literature, we, uh, we thought, let's, let's just do it straight and say ductility for us is the strain at peak stress. Let's compare the strain at peak stress and then correlate this to ductility. Um, so this point, for example, right, would be uh, the peak stress and this associated strain to this. Modeling approach. Um, so we have done this experimentally and also then modeled. Uh, you can model this with discrete fibers to capture the anisotropic behavior of huge PC, especially if you want to investigate different fiber orientation. It's time consuming. It needs... Um, computational power, but it's relatively accurate. Uh, we wanted to be more efficient, so we decided to model the fiber as a smeared reinforcement. It can also capture the anisotropic behavior of UHPC and is more computationally efficient. How has this been done? We used Athena, similar to the previous um, speaker. Uh, we used a concrete matrix with the right uh, fractal approach, uh, we use the fibers as a smeared reinforcement on top. The bond between smeared reinforcement and concrete was perfectly made, and we adjusted in the stiffness matrix to adjust for the right behavior I will show you of a fiber reinforced UHPC. So we uh, added the concrete matrix with the stiffness matrix of the smeared reinforcement. So uh, we did direct tensile tests. You see it here. We did the simulation of a a quarter um, fiber reinforced UHPC. We um, added the smeared fiber reinforcement, and you see here the experimental test. And then we can adjust the stiffness of the fiber reinforcement exactly in a way that it matches the behavior, uh, strain hardening, post peak behavior of a, of a UHP fiber reinforced UHPC with the right crack, fracture cracking approach of the matrix. Uh, and then we did pull out tests using this model and also experimental tests. You see the experiments here. This picture might be small, but it refers to a tensile pullout test, as was mentioned before. Uh, we have designed the specimen in, in a way that it's, uh, the conditions are similar to a bending beam in the tensile zone, right? where we have the rebars, where we have the, uh, the reinforcement. And uh, we're pulling one bar out. We have simulated a quarter of this. Uh, we used for all those tests uh, in high strength reinforcement bar. Um, you see here uh, yield stress 700, ultimate 1,100 megapascal. We used a four slip data, is converted to a bond, a bond strength data relationship. And you see then here I can share some 
results, force versus slip. This is from the experiment, what we measure. And then with the model, we, with the UH fiber reinforced UHPC model we use in here, now we adjust the bond between the bar and the matrix. So we can adjust this for um, fibers which are two volume percent perpendicular orientated to the bar direction. Now the interesting thing is if we now compared to the same test where the fiber orientation hit the bar there and all the fibers were perpendicular oriented in our test. Now we have a random orientation. So what we only did was in our model change the orientation of our anisotropic fiber reinforcement to a random orientation fiber and nothing else. And we could match the experimental results. The same thing if we match it 10 uh, towards an almost perfectly parallel uh, fiber orientation, then we could match the pullout behavior too. I would like to emphasize here that when the fibers are perpendicular to the bar, you see in comparison, um, perpendicular is, is this red one. You achieve the highest pullout force. And if the fiber is parallel to the bar, you achieve the lowest one. It's exactly the, in the way uh, the micromechanics work for pulling out the fiber in force country. So Ula has shown this here too. So if fibers perpendicular to the bar, they, they sow those micro cracks and they lead to a higher uh, capacity. Um, then we can use this model now. We know it works with different fiber orientation. We can increase the fiber volume fraction. And you see here, if we increase the fiber volume fraction to UHPC, capacity and tension increases, and you see this in the pullout behavior as well too. Coming back then to or closing the loop to the uniaxial behavior. We need the material, the UHPC fiber reinforced behavior, what you had. We need the pullout relationship, what we just adjusted, to be able to simulate the uniaxial uh, behavior. We also tested this in experiments. We did um, Unit exit test, you see one bar is going all the way through. This is usually enough pull on the bars and to have a tensile behavior of a rebar reinforced concrete. But we have strain hardening. So the bars, they would yield and fail outside before inside failed. So the ends are strengthened with other bars. So to introduce the tensile force in the bar, you see here uh, how this has been then uh, prepared and then cast. We cast it with different fiber orientation. Here's the machine being tested. Here's the uh, model. This is just a one eighth of the specimen is modeled here. And this is just for the purpose of uh, in, in using the, the force. So we use uh, concrete elements with smeared fiber reinforcement, anisotropic reinforced. And then we use the bond slip data, what we had before. And then we can compared to our test data. We have tested, for example, UHPC with 2% of fibers and 0.9% of rebars, just one rebar in the middle. You see the, the black curve in comparison to just the rebar curve. So you see here the effect of the concrete uh, contribution. And this, the blue curve is the simulation. Now, if the fibers are instead of Parallel, what was here, orientated in the random way, you get a different uniaxial behavior, a different contribution from the concrete, which is not a surprise. And if they are perpendicular oriented, they almost have no effect. Because in the direction you pull, if they are perpendicular in this direction, they don't like resist any forces over cracks. Right? They are just there. So it's almost the same. So if you compare from this is uh, parallel, no, sorry, from perpendicular fibers. The uniaxial stress stre or uniaxial strength increases when you go from perpendicular to random to parallel. But look at the strain, the strain reduces significantly. So we lose ductility by this. Let's take a look at, and maybe this becomes clear with the fiber volume fraction. 
So we look here, all parallel. So all fibers helping in the direction of the load. So all fibers, they help in the UHPC capacity. This is with 0.5% of volume, fiber volume fraction. Nice duct type behavior. A rebar reinforced fiber reinforced UHPC. This is when we increase the volume fraction 2.75. This is when we increase it to 1%. Everything is the same. And this if we increase to 2% of fiber volume fraction. You see the maximum tensile strength. It's the bar plus the concrete um, capacity, but the ductility goes back. And here we, we, we go then beyond 0.5% of strain. The same thing can be seen if the fibers are randomly oriented and the effect goes almost away when they're perpendicular because then they don't have any impact. Now, let's take a look whether this is correct what I said before. I said when the concrete uh, softens, it loses its resistance. So we know strain hardening behavior from UHPC, we can have it in a stress strain relationship, but at some point it opens up one crack and then it softens in a stress versus crack opening relationship. So we have to convert going back to what is the crack opening or a critical one. So we looked at just as an example, some crack width width might be of interest in 0.5. 1.5 millimeter or 0.4 millimeter, depending on some ACI conditions. And then we calculated what would be the rebar increase, potential increase. And we just cut from yield strength to ultimate strength, just the hardening part, would be with this bar 28 kilometers, for example. And how much would the UHPC loses from the top until a crack opening of which would be of interesting of interest. And then it would be, you see here, 12 kilonewton and so on. In some case, for example, if we have 2% of fibers with an allowable crack opening of 0.4%, we have a drop of 43 kilonewton in the matrix and the bar can only catch up 30, 28. So this combination would be critical you would have a loss in ductility and a more like a, a more brittle behavior. So to, to sum this up, um, maybe you have in mind still from the reinforced concrete design, uh, tensile controlled, we say at least the bar strain 0.5%, right? 0.005, 0.5%. Based on the results we have seen, uh, a reinforced UHPC, we would like to have 1%. And here's also some safety included. So if we would draw a line with 1%, what we want to have at peak strength, at least. You see here, some specimen tested with parallel fibers, random fibers, and so on. The ductility goes down with the fiber volume fraction. If we would like to have this there, maybe we should then limit the fiber volume fraction to 0.5%. Again, this is the case where we have 0.9 reinforcement ratio percent with a very high strength bar. But it just raises the question, okay, should we concerned about this in terms of when we have right ductility? And you see this here, for example, simulation 0.5 parallel fibers, for example, here are several macro cracks and micro cracks, of course, with a UHPC. 2% parallel fibers, only one macro crack. Right? That's the, the whole deformation is one crack. And you see it in the specimens too, 0.5%. The micro cracks are not really visible, uh, visible, they are so small. But you have a lot of macro cracks here, 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 here. With 1%, those macro cracks are smaller. 2%, almost one micro crack only. 3%, here's just one crack. And then it's done. So I just wanted to uh, share this and um, see what, uh, put this in your mind in terms of limiting the volume fraction of fiber reinforcement in a rebar reinforced UHPC. I would like to acknowledge the support from the Department of Homeland Security, our uh, department at UConn, and several fellowships, and Shavenga Consulting for their support for Athena. Thank you very much.